Hey guys, it's me, Dante, with Ferrigno Freedom Channel. I'm back again to do another video review with you where I am going to be taking a look at something that actually kind of refutes the first video I did like this, where I'm actually taking a look at what is being said out there in the community about the carnivore diet and lion diet specifically, because in my case, that's what I've been doing now for almost two and a half years. And when I saw that one video that showed Jordan Peterson in the thumbnail saying it almost killed me, I thought, I've never heard him say that. And I pay a lot of attention to what Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson says, that because the reason I found out about this diet is because I listened to what he says. I really have, uh, have a lot of appreciation for that man's mind. We don't agree on everything, but we, on, we agree on a lot. And one of those things has been the benefits of Lion Diet and how it has changed my life, how it has changed his life, how it has changed his daughter's life, and how it's changed many of your lives. And I'm so thankful that you guys are here to come and share your journey with me and to be able to come and watch my journey and use it to motivate you. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to do these videos strictly because... It would give us a chance to make sure if there's any misinformation or disinformation out there that we can look at it together and make sure that when your friends come and say, yeah, I heard this or I heard that, that you'll have an idea of where that came from. So we're going to take a look at the video called My Transformative Journey on the Carnivore Diet, Unbelievable Results, Jordan Peterson. So I've only been eating meat for beef fundamentally for almost five years now. And I've talked to hundreds of people, and we've had messages from thousands of people showing that this is, first of all, radically effective as a weight loss strategy and also seems to produce remarkable effects on the general disease symptom front. Back in November of 2021, there was a study published by a Harvard group, which wasn't a perfect study because it was retrospective self-report, but they followed 20, they assessed 24, 2,500 people who had been on a carnivore diet for six months and showed something approximating a 90% reduction in all disease symptoms. And it was the only scientific paper I ever... 90% reduction in all disease symptoms. And people ask me or try to tell me that this is not healthy. To, to have that big of results, I mean, it is almost like a miracle the way the other video mentioned almost sarcastically that this is miraculous. And it is. It has been miraculous for me and many others. Read where the surprise of the researchers was palpable between the lines in the, in the scientific writing. Because, you know, in a scientific article, all that emotion, negative or positive, is pretty much ironed out. But these people were so shocked by what they found that it couldn't help leaking into the document. And so, well, this has been quite surprising to me because I never imagined in my wildest dreams, number one, that you could just live on meat, number and number two, that it would have such a salutary effect. So for me, I lost 52 pounds in seven months. I went from 212 pounds to 165, which is exactly what I weighed when I was 23. I think that's where I got the idea in the other video that he had lost 65 pounds, is that he is 165 pounds. I knew I heard 65 somewhere along the way. And I've maintained that weight since. I can put on muscle mass with no problem, even though I'm 62. I had a host of inflammatory conditions, some of which were quite serious, including peripheral uveitis, which sometimes blinds people in my right eye, and it disappeared completely, along with psoriasis and gastric reflux disorder, and interestingly enough, um, gum disease, which is technically incurable, which is linked to cardiovascular degeneration, and which has gone away 100% in my case, according to... How amazing is that? Something that is usually considered to be incurable and is related to cardio cardiovascular disease goes away while eating an all carnivore or all ruminant meat diet. And I can attest to the one with the gastric reflux because I used to get acid indigestion all the time. I never actually had a GERD diagnosis, but they had me on omeprazole, 40 milligrams. And that, I believe, is the higher dose. That's like a prescription-level dose of omeprazole. And I found out that that does horrible stuff, stuff to your body overall in the long term. Like, it's only a short-term solution. 
But I see doctors prescribing it as a long-term solution. When I was an administrator at a retirement home, it was common. And those are the kind of things that really scare me about what goes on in our medical system these days, our healthcare system. And I put healthcare in quotes because I don't think they're really caring for our health. They're simply prescribing medicine. It's more like a drug dealer care. Uh, but I didn't see any evidence that they were looking to try to fix anything. They were just putting Band-Aids on the problem. But those Band-Aids would cause other problems and keep them further in business with patients with problems. Multiple measures that my dentists have taken. And so when I've talked to many people who've lost like 100 pounds in a year, you know, because they come to my talks and who are just beside themselves, so to speak, as a consequence of experimenting with this diet. So, well, so that's the story. It's very strange. I don't talk about it that much because I'm not a nutritionist and because I'm still shell-shocked by it. But I'll tell you. I'm still pretty shell-shocked by it, too, myself, and I've been doing it two and a half years. He's been doing it twice as long as I have, but he even admits that it's it's shocking to see such a change in your life because just the, just the idea that I could be below my high school wrestling weight, the weight I had to get down to when I was 16, 17 years old, uh, I don't remember when I exactly started wrestling. I turned 17 while I was in my senior year, but I started wrestling in my senior year also, so I could have been 16 when I started. But I was 210, 215 when I started wrestling, and I had to wrestle heavyweight if I was going to be in that weight class. Anything above 189 back then was heavyweight. Well, the, the max out on heavyweight was 275, and everybody in heavyweight was 275. So if I'm in there at 215, these guys have got a 60-pound weight advantage on me. That was bad enough, not to mention I was new at wrestling. So I worked hard to get that extra 20, 25, 26 pounds off so I could wrestle a 189 weight class. That was, I, I remember like jumping rope every day for an, almost an hour to get down to that level and eating salads and all kind of stuff trying to starve myself or not starve myself but i mean it wasn't fun let's just say that i did eat a lot of fruit at that time period and i didn't realize that that, that was counterproductive but i was cutting out all the the processed garbage and i was cutting out the donuts and the cookies and the breads and things like that so that certainly had an effect on it but for me to be well i got up this morning and stood on the scale at 186 pounds i'm 50 years old and I'm at the most healthy weight I've ever been at in my entire life, uh, with the exception of maybe that I, I was down to 176 a few months ago. And I don't know when I was 176 before. I must have been 12 years old. So it is shell-shocking. It is mind-blowing what this diet has done for me physically, mentally, and spiritually for that matter. And that's a matter for another video. Let's keep going on this. It's something to be 60 and to have the same essential body morphology that I had when I was 23. And that had all disappeared for me in my early 50s. It, it, yeah, you're not the first person I've heard this story from, Jordan. And I, I have to be honest with you, I just don't know how to explain it. Um, the weight loss, by the way, is not the harder part to explain, right? So the more restrictive any diet is, the more one loses weight on average, right? So I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if we put a person on the all potato diet, if they would lose weight. Whereas if you put somebody on the no lettuce diet, nobody's going to lose an ounce. So more restrictive diets, ketogenic diets, which are not as restrictive as what you're doing, are also very effective for weight loss. By the way, so is a zero fat diet. Now, uh, it's a unpalatable diet, and I don't think it's a particularly healthy diet when you start restricting fat that much. The more interesting question to me... Not to mention, I think low-fat diets are what do damage to our gallbladders. I had to have my gallbladder taken out in 2002. I was in my early 30s. No, I was either right at 29 or 30. Right at 30, but I think I might have still been 29. I can't remember. I might have been 29. I can't ever remember how the years work. I was born in 72. It was 2002. It was the summer. I was born in November, so I was probably 29 still. And my son just had his gallbladder taken out, my natural son. 
He had his gallbladder taken out a few years ago. He was only 18 years old. And I know he was doing a low fat type of thing because he was trying to watch his weight and trying to follow all the advice. I truly think that by not letting the part of our body that's designed to deal with fat function processing animal fat is what causes gallstones because the doctors had no answers as to what caused this for me and they still don't have answers for people about gallstones. I personally think it's the low fat dieting and then once that happens it makes it harder for you to even process fat at all. Uh, it does your body can overcome those difficulties but I've got other videos talking about the gallbladder. We'll keep going with this one. And, and, you know, and I can certainly understand if you would say, I have no desire to experiment further by introducing other elements to see if I can preserve this phenotype. But the most interesting question to me is, what are the other foods out there that you might be able to consume? Or in the case of your daughter, right? Like, is it- I'm obviously interested in that too, but I, what I have found because I have now and then tried to eat carbohydrates, what I have found is that if I eat any of them, I start to crave them intensely. If mm -hmm. I don't eat them at all, I, they don't bother me. Assuming, and this goes to the calorie restriction issue, um, w one of the ways of maintaining yourself on a keto diet or a carnivore diet, let's say, is to make sure you're never hungry. And I eat a lot of meat and a lot of high fat meat, and so I'm never hungry. And I don't think that I'm calorie restricted at all because, you know, I can eat a la tomahawk steak sometimes in one sitting, which is about 35 ounces of meat. I never get hungry and I eat high fat carnivore snacks too. What I found is lo as long as I'm never hungry, then I, I'm not inclined to cheat. But if I do try something like an introduction of carbohydrates, first of all, some of my symptoms come back right away, like the GERDs, and I start craving like mad. So... Well, so that's is, my is, is it, is I get the same thing. I get the I get craving for foods that I'm not supposed to have when I've restricted myself. And I only know that because recently I started restricting restricting myself because I think I was overeating. I mentioned this on a previous video. Once I started using Redmond smoke salts, they are so delicious. They just caused me to want to eat more meat. And I wasn't weighing my meat until recently. I bought a scale just so I could make sure before I put them on. And I was shocked at how much these steaks weighed that I was thinking were maybe 16 ounce steaks. Sometimes they're you know 26 ounces and I'm thinking they're a pound. And I was telling people I was eating two pounds a day, but I think I had had an increase in my numbers because I started buying more ribeyes in larger quantities around Christmas time. And then again at Easter, because Publix has that wonderful sale three times a year, Christmas, Easter, and Labor Day. And I was getting them cut into inch and a half, sometimes even two-inch steaks. I don't even know how much those two-inch steaks I weighed, uh, how much they weighed because I never weighed them. But I've weighed some of the steaks that are only an inch and a quarter, and they're close to two pounds. So I was probably eating three and a half to four pounds some days where I had been eating about two pounds a day. Now, after I lost the weight, I expect that my appetite would increase a little bit because I was running on a lot of my own fat. And I did want to cut back on my calories some because I wanted to get the little pockets of fat that I had left. You know, I, I got a 20% body fat ratio on my last DEXA scan, so I thought I'd like to get that down to 10%. I know some people say that's not healthy, but that's my personal desire, and I'd like to be able to do that, so I've been trying. But it does cause me to have cravings for things that I don't, I shouldn't have. And when I have eaten carbohydrates, I've had like rebouts with keto flu. And it, it always turns out to be a loser because my body says, this is not what we want to run on. It's not that I can't eat them. It's that I shouldn't eat them. Is it, is, it, is it all carbohydrates or um, like, for example, if you introduce vegetables, uh, non-starchy vegetables, How, what happens, both symptom-wise and uh, craving-wise? Yeah, well, for a while I was eating nothing but meat and greens, mm -hmm. but I still had some residual symptoms. My wife has a host of immunological problems that are somewhat low level, and I have a different host, and Michaela seemed to get all of them. And so 
you know, maybe we're absurdly sensitive for reasons that wouldn't be true of other people. But it's definitely the case that I do better. And believe me, this isn't something I particularly want. It is the case that I do better if I just stick to beef. Now, could I have pork and chicken? Um, I had a very terrible bout of ill health and I'm disinclined to do a lot of experimentation, although I'll probably try again in the future sometime. But I do know that beef works. We've been hypothesizing internally in our family for what it's worth is that the reason that beef works and that other ruminant animals, bison, so forth, uh, um, lamb, goat, is because they're, they, they process what they eat through so many stomachs that by the time it is actually turned into meat, there's pretty much nothing else there. Yep. So it's, it's a very purified form of nutritional, uh, uh, very, well, a very purified form of food. Now, like I said, that's anecdotal, and this is partly why I don't talk about it, but I... I can understand him saying that it's anecdotal, but it seems to be clear for me too, because I have the same response. When I go back to pork and chicken, I, tend, I typically feel more bloated or I have some digestion issues. I definitely don't like the way the foods taste as much. Um, I have to avoid bacon mostly because every time I've had bacon, I can taste it's got sugar in it because they're often cured with sugar. And I a lot of times eat the bacon that's at my work when I'm hungry and I haven't eaten anything that day. So I just find it's better. I do better on beef. Same same story there. I also noticed that the words in this video don't always match. So I guess they just did it automatic, the, uh, the closed captioning. But I can tell you, after you've talked to a thousand people who tell you the same anecdote, you don't have an anecdote anymore. You have a hypothesis. And it's really quite something seeing these people. That's basically what I was saying is you don't have an anecdote anymore when you have a number of people that have the same results. It's a hypothesis now. So that's, he just, sometimes he finishes a thought for me. I love it. Who show me pictures of what they looked like a year ago. And, you know, they were carrying around an extra person with them. And they're still shell-shocked by the transformation, you know, because it's really something to lose, say, 150 pounds in a year. And so, well, um, I don't know what to make of that. I do know that it's been, the diet has actually been rejuvenating for my wife and I. Like, its effect on muscle tone has to be seen to be believed. And that's true even though both of us are 60. Like, my wife is in better shape from a musculature perspective now at 63 than she was when she was 40. And she was a very physically fit person who was exercising constantly and who was in pretty damn good shape. And to see that reverse rather than just, you know, stop deteriorating, I don't really know what to make of it. I would love it to be studied prospectively. I'm, I'm very curious as to what's going on, in particular with, with that. I mean, there are, there are lots of data out there showing the efficacy of a ketogenic diet in the amelioration of type 2 diabetes. Um, I, I do think, I mean, look, when it comes to type 2 diabetes, any amount of weight loss is going to produce a benefit, but it seems that a ketogenic diet has the easiest um, compliance. And uh, there might be something to the fact that it's kind of removing the thing of which there is an excess, right? By, by at least taking away the thing that is in most excess, uh, it's easier to kickstart that. Uh, a fast, of course, is also a great way to kickstart that, right? And I've heard people refer to carnivore diet and lion diet as basically fasting while still eating. So I, I agree with what he's saying there. Something about taking a what taking glycogen levels down in the liver and the muscle makes this easier. Well, that the advantage too of the diet, the carnivore diet in particular, is because you can eat as much as you want. It's actually not a diet. You know, the problem with diets is that they require privation and they require almost continual privation. And then they also tend to produce a yo-yo effect. And that's partly because if you get in a fight with your hypothalamus, which drives hunger, you're gonna lose because it's there to make damn sure you don't starve. And the probability that you can override it for any length of time, well, it's very, very low. And that probably varies from person to person for all sorts of reasons, but you don't wanna get in a scrap with your you know, he brings up a good point that makes me think about 
maybe I need to rethink my approach to trying to get down to 10% body fat because if I am restricting my intake any, it does tend to cause me to have more cravings. It is helping to get the weight down, but I can do temporary fast and get over that too. But by restricting constantly, trying to keep my weight of meat that I've been eating around that two pound area, I've noticed that I have times throughout the day where I'm more tempted to want to have something I shouldn't have. And working in a kitchen, that's not very helpful. Thankfully, the worst things I've had are pork and I even tried chicken once for the first time in two and a half years the other day because I was hungry and they had made some baked chicken available. And I thought, well, I'll just give it a try. I didn't really enjoy it all that much, but I felt like I wasn't cheating, so it wasn't that bad. But I haven't had the desire to have anything but beef when I was eating till satiated. So I guess the key is going to have to be making sure I, I get up that exercise. I know doing rucking and walking is great, but I probably need to get to a little more intense level if I really want to be down to a 10% body fat ratio. And that's just me sharing my thoughts on what I have talked about for my journey because, you know, I'm learning as I go on this too. So you guys have got to kind of take what I say with a grain of salt in a lot of ways as I try new things like trying to get down back down to 10% body fat. So I'm learning and I don't want to get in a fight with my hypothalamus because it's going to be trying to force me to eat things I don't want to eat. There's no doubt about that. Lower level motivational systems. Now, you know, if I ever start to crave a banana split, for example, I can just eat another five or six ounces of steak and then I don't care. It's not like it wouldn't taste good, you know, but it doesn't preoccupy me the way it would if I was hungry. I've really noticed this when I go into grocery stores, because if I go into a grocery store after having consumed enough meat, then the provision of this infinite display of delicious foods really doesn't affect me much. But boy, if I ever go into a grocery store when I'm hungry, that's quite the pain in the neck. The only part that I can disagree with on that is I've gotten to the point where I look at this stuff as poison and it doesn't tempt me to want to buy it at all. Uh, and I hardly have ever gone shopping when I was hungry since I've been doing this diet because I've hardly ever been in a situation where I've been hungry up until recently where I've been trying to really restrict my intake some to get back down to where I was. And like I say, I'm learning as I go on that, but it's something I'd like to point out is I don't have that problem at the grocery store like he mentioned, at least not anymore. I think earlier on it would have been a tr struggle because I remember at one point I tried a Pop-Tart again and it's like of all things, why in the world would I want to try a Pop-Tart? But it was something that I used to like and I saw my son had a box of them and I said, oh, I'm going to have one. And it just, it was like licking flour out of a bowl. It was awful. Because everything's delightful and tempting, you know? So the fact that you can eat enough or even as much as you want on a keto or carnivore diet does seem to distinguish it in some ways from the diets that depend more particularly on mere calorie restriction. So I noticed that as I got older, my ability to concentrate when I was reading was deteriorating. So when I was 25, 30, when, if I picked up a book and read it, I would shut everything else out and I would remember, concentrate on, focus on, attend to what I was reading, read every word and understand it with no problem. But that started to deteriorate as I got older. And I noticed that it took an increasing amount of effort to shut everything off. And that instead of reading as deeply as I was, I was sort of glancing at the words. And when I started this carnivore diet, that reversed. And I can now, I think, I actually think this is true. I think I can read faster and more efficiently than I could when I was in my 20s. I can attest to that as well. Um, especially being an avid reader, I, I, I did get to a point where I could almost just read a whole page and think back to myself, I don't know what I just read. I looked at all the words and saw them, but then I didn't know what I just read. And it's usually because my mind was focused on something else or they said something in the narrative that distracted me and I started thinking of something else and I just kept on reading. But I, I do find that it is easier to read and I, I love to read. I, I try to read at least 23, 24 books a year. As a matter of fact, this year it's uh, it's only June and I'm, at, I'm reading my 24th book right now. And I've done some doozies this year. 
I'm actually reading two books because I've been reading uh, Gibbons' uh, the, the, the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. <sighs> That's taken forever to get through. The language is just not what I'm used to reading, but it's informative. It's just, I had to put it down for a while and t uh, read something else. But anyway, I, I noticed the same thing on the reading. So th this is just good information. And I love that this video is, is more up to date, showing that he has still been sticking with ruminant meat, water and salt, you know, basically five years now. Like he said, he has done some experimentation and it makes me feel better because he always said, I never cheat. Now, he's I was defining cheat differently. I think I was defining cheat as being even experimenting with certain things. And now I know that he's experimented with some carbohydrates and vegetables and things like that. I've done some experimenting as well. And it's rare that I experiment anymore because I've just found that I do better on ruminant meats. And the only time that I have something that's not ruminant is usually out of necessity or because I'm doing something like restricting my caloric intake. And that that I may need to revisit that. So I'm glad we watched this together. I hope you found it useful. And let me know if you enjoy this format of, of videos because I'm not going to do this all the time. But I wanted to be able to do something that might take the place of some of my walk and talks because I do so much of my exercise while I'm working now because I have to walk three to four miles a day. And I do get extra resistance on those walks because I'm pushing a cart across carpet. So the wheels are digging in a little more. It's got some weight to it. And a lot of times when I get home, I just don't feel like doing another ruck or doing a walk that day, especially in this hot Florida sun. But, you know, if this is something that you find useful and enjoyable, please let me know in the comments. And also let me know what other videos you'd like me to review if it is something you find useful and uh, enjoyable. So that's all I got to say for this one. Stick around for a little message I have from Vintage Tradition. It's a company that makes tallow balms and soaps and things like that, but they make them all with natural ingredients, mostly animal products. I used their soap for the first time in the shower today, and my skin feels really good. It's only tallow and cold-pressed olive oil. So I've never had a soap quite this pure and natural, and it just it feels nice. So check out this little bit of information I got from Vintage Tradition, and I'll see you guys next time. I wanted to try out this new skincare product that I bought on Amazon called Vintage Tradition. It says it's the whole food of skincare. A little goes a long way. Ingredients, tallow from 100% grass-fed cows, cold-pressed extra virgin olive oil, therapeutic grade essential oils, cedar wood, ylang ylang, lavender, and basil. As opposed to using chemical-based cream like this that I usually use after I shave, at least all the ingredients in here are natural. This is only a two ounce bottle. It's not very inexpensive, but I'm gonna see after I just did a shave how well this spreads out. Spread it around. This stuff really does seem to go a long way. I like it. It's definitely soothing to my skin. It doesn't it doesn't have the burning sensation that it had when I got out of the shower. Vintage tradition. Might want to give it a try. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?